Welcome to Uriah Heap, the Magician's Podcast. I'll be covering every studio song the band has recorded and every bonus track that I can find. Each week we'll go over a new song from the beginning to where they are currently, and as they keep adding albums, I'll keep adding shows. Let the deep dive party begin. In the magic garden, some were singing, some were dancing. Hello and welcome to a special New Year's Eve episode of Uriah Heap, the Magician's Podcast. My name is Scott and I am your host on this fan-based, band-endorsed podcast where I am going over each and every song that Uriah Heap ever recorded in the studio. And, uh, you know, whether it's a, an actual album release track or a bonus track using the deluxe CD versions, which had uh, a good amount of bonus tracks. I don't know if there are any others that are outside of that, uh, but if there are and someone tells me about them and I can locate a good, clean version of them, then, uh, then I'll add those into the mix, of course. But for now, we're going off of the deluxe CDs, and today's song is called What's Within My Heart, which is a bonus track from the Look at Yourself album. Uh, a great album. Really, the band at this point, I think, has defined who they want to be. Uh, they're still going to take some twists and turns, you know, as members come and go and people bring their influences or, you know, they get an idea for something. Uh, things will change. The sound changes. The, uh, the subject matter changes over time. But uh, this, this track in particular, it's a very lovely track. I could see why it was not included on the album. For one, there was a couple of uh, sort of balladesque songs on there already, and this is definitely one that uh, that would be a uh, a break from the otherwise uh, very forceful album with uh, with some good hard rock on it. And I think that they probably had enough breaks as it is. So maybe that's why it seems like it was uh, you know almost like a, a scratched version or a demo, um, just saying, hey, you know what, I'm just going to lay this idea down while I'm thinking of it. And uh, I'll get back to developing it later or, or, hey, guys, I put something on tape. What do you think? And deciding that it wasn't for the album or wasn't going to fit or whatever the case was. But I could understand why it didn't make the album. Um, I do think it would be a great Ken Hensley solo song. I don't know if it was released uh, by him as a solo artist or not, uh, but possibly I, I would I would definitely welcome hearing a more developed version of this. But for now, what we have is the recording that was done during the look at yourself sessions but it's a good song and i think it's well worth a listen um, i i just feel like i said that it's a little work in progress ish but as i've said before when i do these bonus track episodes i really like that i like seeing the the more raw side of the band than just what's polished and you know what we as artists are expected to hold ourselves to because people you know like when i'm uh, pitching a score for a film or having a meeting with a director they'll they might say something like well you know, I really want something that, that sounds like Hans Zimmer. Okay, well, are you going to give me the money and the time to try and pull off what Hans Zimmer does? Or are you saying that you have $500 and you still want this to sound like Hans Zimmer? And it's like we're held to these standards of artists that are polished, that have a, a lot of experience in inside that success level of the profession. And people want us to replicate what they do. And, you know, like I was talking in a previous episode about doing Uriah Heap covers, it's just so not tangible to be able to pull off that magic in the way that they do it. And any other version of that song is going to not be that version of the song. So I kind of feel like it's it's the same thing when it comes to, you know, undeveloped songs. It's like it's great to see the raw side of the artist to say, hey, you know what? They didn't just do perfectly polished songs. They have these other songs, too, that they were in, in development on. And, um, you know, for us to also see that we develop the same way as musicians, you know, we we come up with ideas. Some of them turn into songs. Some of them just stay ideas. Some of them, you know, get developed and dropped at different stages. And I really like that that humanity side of the band instead of just like, here's all the songs that we worked on really hard and polished them. And that's what your impression of us is. It's like, well, there are a lot of other things that happen to get to that point. And I really like seeing that side of things. Um, but anyway, that's uh, that's how I feel about the song and the cover songs and things like that. But let's uh, let's just deep dive right into this one. Here it is. What's Within My Heart by Uriah Heap. A demo song from the Look At Yourself sessions. Red lights on. One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. 
Very nice, gentle setup. Um, nothing too fancy or uh, or tricky. Just a you know, just a nice warm sound and a, a little, um, just like a little bed for the the rest of the song to sit on. And I I like the gentleness of the opening. And then we have a second guitar that comes in um, playing some little little filler that seems really nice too. So. So far, I, I really like the mood of the song. Um, I kind of feel like this is going to be one of those songs where the story drives it more so than the music, and the music is just going to be really supportive of that uh, the narrative that will be delivered. Will I never see again The smiling faces of my friends Could it be they're gone completely And no thoughts will linger sweetly in my May I hear once more the bird calls my name May I be permitted just one friend to share my game Well, obviously I knew what was coming. I've heard the song before, but just just I'd say that in the way of you know, it, it, as a first time listener, like here's here's what I felt was going to happen. Um, very nice vocal, very gentle. It kind of reminds me of Here Am I that we listened to during the Salisbury sessions. If you haven't listened to that episode and you like this song, go back and listen to that one because I think you'll probably like that too. Um, you know, you get the feeling that it's just a, a person that's looking for that missing puzzle piece in their life. and um, But it's got a real gentle delivery. Uh, very, very lovely vocal. The music is just still s- sitting exactly where it was before. Uh, like I said, it's a, it's vocal driven. It doesn't need to have a lot of music to carry it at this point. One who doesn't give a damn For what I seem to be But really cares for what I am And what's within my heart You know, it's it's uh, interesting. We're talking like 1971-ish here and thinking about the uh, narrative of the song. So much of it reflects on seeing this this person for who they really are, for what's really within their heart. And I think about uh, how how this applies to today's world where so many people, they don't even post real pictures of themselves. You know, they've got little uh, Photoshop apps to clean their skin and and do all these little things that make them look physically perfect. But it's so unrealistic. And we know most of the time when people have used a filter, but it's like, I want you to see the real me. But in today's world, we're not showing the real me. Most of the time we're showing this image we want people to have of us. And it's, it's really kind of a silly little game, but it's one that's gone on well before social media. You know, even you, uh, you go to school or you go to a job or you go to a family gathering and you're always feeling like you have to, um, you know, put on a show, like be like, oh, no, everything's great. Everything's great. I'm loving life. Um, And it's not always that way. But we feel like it's not okay to have that because then, you know, people won't leave us alone with concern that's not necessarily warranted. It's like if you're if you're having anything less than a stellar day, people will be all over you about it. And so I really kind of um, empathize with this character and you you definitely feel that that's something that's very important to them because they'll repeat that quite often during the song and um yeah it's it's just interesting how that applies today to today's world when when this was written uh home computers weren't really a thing yet so just goes to show how some of those social issues they morph as time goes on and as the world changes but they're still the same issues Oh, 
just a beautiful uh, vocal delivery. I'm trying to think of what this style would be called, if this would be considered folk rock or what. I'm not sure, um, obviously not uh, hard rock, but um, I really like the gentle delivery here of the vocals. And again, now we're expanding into another uh, social issue, which would be more the, you know, he, he wants you because you're hot or because of the things that he sees and not who you really are. You know, all that surface stuff, the things that you you know, you put out there for the world to see, which are not uh, necessarily things that really represent the actual you. And a lot of people tend to hide those things away. And so I, I think that the the lyrics of this song are particularly interesting. Um, I like the addition of the bass guitar. It was a very gentle, subtle introduction, nothing overpowering, um, just a, a really nice way to round out the overall sound because we're hearing a lot of mid-range in the guitar mid to upper range in the vocals. So it's nice to have a little bit of balance with that in the bass as the vocals get um, a little bit uh, louder and more emotional. And uh, and then a nice little cymbal swell to uh, make the transition since we don't have drum rolls and things in the song. Um, cymbal swell can fill in for that fairly nicely, especially in a song like this. It just, um, it sort of washes you in from one part to another, I would say. On my grave. Must be a heart somewhere near all the love I had that will reach out in sincerity and take my life in hand. And then I'll know it's not someone who wants just what I seem to be, but one who. You know, I have to be honest that um, that last verse is a little tough to listen to, um, especially in light of recent events. You, you really, um, at least I do, and I'm sure hundreds of thousands of other people still uh, feel the loss of Ken. And, uh, you know, when you hear things, when, when people are singing in their, in their time, when they're talking about being gone, um, that always just it's a it's a little bit haunting to me. So that verse is a little bit hard to listen to, but I love the delivery of it. I love the um, just that circling back to again, you know, uh, I, I want you to love me for me and who I really am, and not this person that um, people perceive me to be. Uh, I might be stretching the the narrative a little with my imagination, but I that's pretty much where I feel it's heading, and uh, it's a it's a really lovely song. Here's where it gets a little more into the part where I feel it was just kind of um, a, a bit of a scratch pad because what we're going to hear here at three minutes and 49 seconds goes all the way until 524. There's no real changes. Um, there's nothing that happens in the song. There's no more verses. It's just a repetition of, of one line. And um, I feel like this is where some further development could have been needed. It could have changed into maybe a bridge into uh, another part. There's no solo in it, um, which you wouldn't really need any kind of grandiose solo, but just maybe a little something to break it up a little bit. Um, but it's kind of interesting. So this is the uh, what I would call the scratch pad section of the song. I have no inside knowledge on what happened um, at this point, but uh, that's just kind of what my my feelings are. It's lovely. Don't get me wrong. But with, you know, uh, I, I think it probably just the development just didn't go further on it.
Okay, so we did have a little bit of an addition. We had that nice little strum and then um, the the count on the hi-hat uh, very gently mixed in there. Um, I think the the other thing that's uh, really nice about the song, though, is I really like uh, Paul Newton's bass playing. It's uh, It's very simple. The song doesn't need anything to overshadow it. Um, but just some really nice, gentle notes, very uh, smooth playing there. And, uh, and you know, it's, um, it, it can be, even listening to this, it can be an emotional song. And sometimes you don't need a lot to make it emotional. This is very basic writing. Um, it doesn't have a lot going on musically. It's very vocally driven. It just has enough to really support the narrative. Like I said in the beginning, it um, just moves, thing, moves things along very nicely, but doesn't overshine the vocal, it gives it a little space to breathe and do what it's going to do. I think the vocals are mixed a little bit quietly. So uh, if you like, you can go to the show notes where I have the lyrics and you can follow along there if you're having a hard time hearing them. Um, I don't know what you're listening through. So you may, depending on what kind of headphones or stereo system or whatever you listen to the podcast on, uh, I can hear them fairly clearly in my headphones, but I'm, you know, in the studio. So uh, I tend to be able to pick out those things a little bit more easily. Um, but that's the song, guys. You know, a uh, nice way to to finish off the year with just this nice, gentle, transitional song. Um, I really like it. I, I would like to see some more development on it. I'll have to look and see if there's any other versions of it that I'm not aware of. I, I know there aren't by Uriah Heat, but maybe Ken Hensley did one. Um, but it's just a very nice, gentle, light song. And it's, a, you know, it's another cry for um, cry for love, really, I think. It's uh, a cry for, I should say, a cry for honest, genuine love, not that, um, you know, love me on the surface for who you think I am or who I show you, like really find out about me, learn about me, get to know the real me and love that because that's the part that matters the most. And I think that's actually a great message to end the year on. I really do. So, you know what, guys, this uh, this has been such an adventure so far. I mean, I've only been at this a couple of months since the podcast actually started. I know I dropped a couple of early, you know, here's what's going to happen episodes um, that I needed to do to get the, uh, the, uh, the RSS feeds and all that stuff going and kind of, you know, get you guys excited and give you an idea of what was to come. Uh, and then we had a delay in the show where, uh, where Mick and I were taking some time to kind of evaluate things and see what we could do to make it even better. And um, Mick has been able to provide us with some direct clips, which is nice. Um, Talked to him recently, and we should be uh, getting him back before too much longer. You know, it's such a crazy time of year. They're working on an album that uh, they're hoping to record in February. Um, I'm still hoping that they can do that. I don't know when it'll actually be out, um, because you've got so many things that go into that after the, the recording is done. Um, but uh, hopefully he'll be uh, able to rejoin us before too much longer. Uh, I know that you guys uh, have really enjoyed his takes on the song, as have I. Um, I've really learned a lot from them. And I love hearing his passion, too, from, you know, from these songs that were a, a very important part of his history and some that, he, that the band still performs to this day. But, you know, all those other hidden gems that, uh, that they don't perform or, you know, that are, are might just be considered album tracks because they're not in that high rotation anywhere. And, you know, I've written a lot of music too. And I go back and listen to something that I did 20 or so years ago, every once in a while. And I, I kind of like, I don't remember writing all those parts or I don't remember this or that. And it's, it's nice and refreshing for me to hear those songs again too. So hopefully Mick's enjoying that. I know he probably listened to a bunch of this stuff for when they were getting the box set ready um, earlier in the year. So some of these might be a little more familiar than they would have been otherwise. But, uh, oh, I also saw a lot of people posting pictures in the, uh, in the groups about uh, them getting the 50th anniversary box set for Christmas. And uh, every one of them that uh, posted was just elated. And uh, yeah, that had to be a hard thing. Like, oh, honey, you know what? I think I'm going to buy this. Um, No, you shouldn't do that because I've already bought it for your Christmas present. But I can't tell you that. But I have to dissuade you from buying it because we don't need two of them. Um, But great gift idea. And I saw some people got some Uri Heat mugs and stuff. That was pretty cool. Um, yeah, really nice Christmas for people. And it was really nice to see them share all those, uh, all those gifts, lots of box sets. That was really cool. I was very happy to see that. Uh, so, uh, hopefully you guys are all having a, uh, wonderful and safe New Year's Eve celebration. Um, you know, please party responsibly. This is a, a crazy time of year. I never go out on New Year's Eve just because it's, uh, you know, it's one of the most dangerous nights of the year to be on the road, uh, even with with uh, everything that we're looking at this year. There's probably still going to be a lot of people going out to parties and whatever, even though, um, you know, it's not the safest thing. But uh, just be careful out there and um, come back tomorrow 
for the New Year's Day episode of Uriah Heap, the Magician's Podcast. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Uriah Heap, the Magician's Podcast. If you have enjoyed this show, please consider going over to Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast outlet, leaving a rating or a review. Be sure to subscribe to make sure that you are notified when new episodes are available. Please be sure to share this podcast with your fellow Uriah Heap enthusiasts and anyone who you think would like Uriah Heap, which should be everyone. And if you are so inclined, please feel free to contribute to the Patreon account. And if you are not a Patreon subscriber, you can also pay through the PayPal link on the website listed in the show links below. I would also like to thank Uriah Heap for their very generous support of the show. And thank you guys for listening. We'll see you in the next episode. Happy days.